Hey guys, Jacob here, and uh, we are doing a quick look and an unboxing basically on the Cena Prism. Um, I just got this camera from Cena. Uh, we're going to be doing some testing on it before a full review comes out. So I, I'm not in any way ready to uh, uh, really comment on the quality or anything yet, um, other than just what I've I've opened it up and looked at it. Now I've already opened it up and looked, but uh, that's just because I'm impatient. But <clears throat> anyway, so packaging looks great. It's got all the specs on the on the side here, um, and then it has the uh, you know shows a bunch of the mounting options here. Now, first thing you notice when you get this box is um, this is a really really you know, it's pretty heavy, and you know the last time I bought a GoPro or even my Drift, um, I wasn't really that impressed by how many. Uh, options came with it and how much stuff came with it. My first GoPro that I bought was a box probably this big and it came with like suction cup mount um, and it came with a bunch like probably eight or nine um, of the sticky mounts and a bunch of other you know angled brackets and all sorts of crazy stuff. You buy a GoPro now you get like two stickies and like none of the extras you know maybe maybe a uh, an, uh, an elbow so it's they've definitely started cutting back on what you get for your money with these cameras so anyway when I seen this box first thing I thought was man there's got to be some cool stuff in there so let's get in here and I'll show you what comes with the camera okay right off the bat uh, it looks like you got a helmet mounting parts box the camera and a waterproof case That's the top layer. Okay, waterproof case here. It's got like a little clear cover up, pull off. I've done that yet. Um, looks like the mount uses quarter twenty um, mounting, which is pretty standard, like with video cam with uh, uh, you know digital cameras and stuff. Except for it, there's I don't know if you both see it. There's these little holes all along through here that when the plate goes on there, it's got a tab that locks in, so you can have it in these orientations, and they're there's a lot of them. They're not real crude, but if they put too many of them together, it would be uh, less strong. So anyway, you pull the tab, and you lift up to open. Um, it's got a rubber seal. Now this this cover um, is sealed, completely waterproof here. Um, has your two button access here, and that's pretty much it. Um, it's padded on the inside so the camera doesn't move or anything so I'm, I doubt you get any like jiggle like you would with some of the other cameras that are in waterproof cases here's the actual camera um, it's pretty dang small it's about the same size as a GoPro except for the lens is on the end so it sits long ways instead of flat uh, you know the a GoPro the the screens over here and the lens is, is right here and so it's thicker this way than it is this way so anyway comes with the lens cap on it that does say seen on it there's the camera mics right below it says Bluetooth um, back it's, it's kind of rubber coated you know if you'd be able to tell like here in the video it's got a uh, your quarter 20 with the little holes you can actually see them better on this now um, now I've already put the battery in this but the battery does not come in it whenever you first pull it out of the box. You've got a water resistant cover over the uh, the port there and then to open up the back you simply slide that and the battery rides here along with the micro SD card slot um, your output to hook it up to the computer and to charge it and then your HDMI. So um, as far as I understand with this this part of the camera it's water resistant probably about the same as like with the uh, 20S or the, any of the other helmet communicators. They're, they're pretty good for like sprinkles and stuff like that. Uh, you wouldn't want to take them in a downpour though. So there's the camera. It's really small. I mean you can see the size in the palm of my hand. Um, it's, it's pretty heavy for its size but it's small so it's not really... Uh, I would put it a little heavier than a GoPro. I'd have to put it on the scale to actually find out, but probably a little lighter than my Drift. Um, but the Drift has the screen, so I mean, you know, it's got to take up 
acreage on the on the actual camera. So we're going to set that right there next to the Cena 20s, um, and we'll talk about the Bluetooth here in a minute when we get to that part. Um, but anyway, we're going to dig into some of the mounting stuff because this isn't opening bo open boxing. This isn't a uh, review. Anyway, let's see what all comes in this bad boy. Okay, looks like we got a couple different options here. First thing, looks like looks like that is a strap mount for like goggles. It's sit like on the side, and uh, you see how it has this ball right here that's not there. That is actually in one of the other pieces because that's part of their whole. Uh, um, their mounting system lets you be able to tilt and stuff. Now, you'll see that some of this stuff is pretty reminiscent of the GoPro stuff. And it's because GoPro has a really strong, good product. But this is actually different. The GoPro has a, uh, uh, a line in the middle that comes up from the deal. And the clip has a groove in it that slides into it. This is exactly the opposite. There's a groove in the mount and the clip has a has a male end of it so when it goes in it has to slide that groove at first I thought man I can just shave off that groove and I'll be able to use GoPro mounts too because um, I already got GoPro mounts stuck to some of my stuff like uh, this uh, LS2 helmet's got a GoPro mount on top of it but that's not the case I would have to actually drill or mill out the or well dremel probably this groove and then make a groove into it and I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with that so Anyway, this is the strap, rubber coated on the back. Uh, that's good for you guys that wear dirt bike goggles. And then this quickly oh, snaps into it. Man, that is really snug. That is actually really good. It was kind of a pain to put it in there, but that's really good that it's that snug. So uh, we'll get to the part. I'll show you the ball mount system here in just a second when we get to that part. No, oh, it's just sticking over there. Set these bags out of my way. Um, looks like we got a big old long thumb screw there. Now, I'm not going in any particular order, but uh, this one we have an Allen wrench and then a 3M base. Now this base has a groove channel on it right here, has our logo on it, so we're gonna. We're going to see what connects to that here in just a minute. Here's one of the absolute coolest mounting options we have here. And if you have a Placina helmet communicator, you'll understand what this is. Um, this is a way to mount the camera to the side of the helmet without having to stick anything to the helmet. So you could transfer this from helmet to helmet. You could probably even buy multiples of these and just have them on each helmet if you wanted to. Um, so that's cool. And then this is just a filler in case your helmet's uh, shaped weird. But that is awesome. You basically unscrew these, slide this up between the uh, uh, the outside shell and the inside padding, and then tighten it down and it keeps it locked down on there. They're really snug. So we'll, just, we'll stick that over there. Next thing we have is, uh, like I said, one of the GoPro looking mounts. This is actually, uh, like I said, there's a channel right down through here, so the GoPros will not be able to, uh, the GoPro bases, you would not be able to put the Cena stuff in. Uh, it looks like you might actually get away with using this base uh, with a GoPro on it. I don't have a GoPro uh, mount with me, but yeah, it looks pretty similar. I could actually put it up there and check, but... Anyway, that's that's something to think about. No, we're gonna do this one next. This is actually really pretty pretty cool. This right here is uh, the mount with the push pins that would go into here. You would just slide it in there, so you could stick this to your helmet um, or to any other curved thing you know, front of your bike or something. And then the camera would attach to this. And then this is adjustable. So you could have the camera sitting, let's say I'm mounting it to this table. 
You can have the camera sitting. Like this, all the way to here. You can have it turned, facing any of these. So you can basically aim it about anywhere you want using this mount right here. And that's pretty cool. Completely adjustable that way. Uh, and the camera is going to have to come off of it from the bottom. So if you're mounting this on the side of the helmet up and down, you'd have to do it this way. So that the camera's this way. Like this. Um, if you mounted it, let me see how else you could mount this. I guess that way, but the camera would be sticking out of the side. That's the only real way to have this mounted on the side of the helmet would be like that. So, uh, but that is a cool option. If you mounted it up on the top of the of the helmet, this would be a, a pretty good option because you could put this up on top, the camera would sit up and down, and you could have tilt this way. So that's kind of cool. I'm gonna put that over there with this. Now we're over here to this ball mechanism, which is actually pretty cool. Okay. So, this and this go hand in hand, as far as the way it's set up right now. This piece you can stick to the helmet, and this is so you can have a quick release mount system. This will slide on here, and it's locked on there. And what you do is you take the ball here, slide it through the cap, and then shove it into the, uh, into the mount. And what this gives you is an adjustable mount. So this is stick, stuck to your helmet, um, and this is adjustable both in and up. So let me loosen it up so I can show you. It's adjustable both this way and this way, which is really cool. So your camera has a groove right here. So is this. So you basically slide it up into the top and then snap the camera in. So at this point the camera can tilt this way, this way, or up, or down, any way you want it. Once you get it set, you simply tighten up this thumb screw and it is locked in. And like I said, it's quick release. So it's on your helmet, you want to pop it off. There you go. Easy as that. So you got a bunch of options. This would probably be one of the best ways to mount it on the side of the helmet if you did not want to use the um, non-sticky mount. So if you're going side of the helmet, those are your two options. And you could actually do this one on the side too, but this would probably be a better top of the helmet mount. Or uh, maybe um, under the visor or something. I mean, this does have an upside down mode, so you could actually mount it up here like you would a GoPro. Uh, I know a lot of people do that. So. That's your helmet mounting options. Now, the, the other cool thing about this is um, you could actually mount this on the side of the helmet in the waterproof case and have audio. So, um, that is one really cool feature, and we'll talk about that later in the review. And that'll be another video. Um, but these helmet mounting options, now you can't use like this option or this option. Um, but um, you can actually use um, this with this to have it waterproof on the side of your helmet. So that's kind of cool. I didn't actually finish talking about this. Um, this uses this part. I told you the groove there. That's what connects in here like that. And so you can actually just leave all this on the helmet and then just click the camera in and out when you want it to. Pretty cool. So give me just a second. I'm going to put all this back up and we're going to dig into the rest of the box. Okay, we're back. I've got the helmet box put up. Now we're going to show you what comes in the bottom of the box here. So you lift out the little tray here and chunk it. And uh, Bottom opens up. Okay. 
Okay, that's everything in the box. Okay, so we are digging into the contents of the back of the box. So, I have not actually opened these up, so I'm not 100% sure how some of them go together or anything yet. Like that was still taped up. Like I said earlier, this thing comes with uh, a lot more things than you would you would actually expect. And uh, a new release, they usually do when they're new releases, because people don't have, uh, they aren't accustomed to buying the mounts and things like that. So, okay, we got another flat mount. This one's completely flat, the other one was curved. It looks like it comes with one of each. Remember the waterproof housing we had earlier? Well, now we have a windowed back door for that waterproof housing, which is really pretty cool. I'm not sure I'd ever really use that because if uh, if I want it to be non 100% waterproof, why would I even just run it? Why wouldn't I just not even run it in the box? I don't have to plug anything into it really. Um. Well, first thing we're going to talk about is the suction cup mounts. They're already out. We're going to start dealing with that. So, it's a double or a single suction cup mount based on how um, how you have it set up. And this is kind of kind of a weird deal. Like, uh, pull this out. I looked online. I haven't done it yet, but I looked online at how to do this. Pull the pin out. And then I guess this bad boy goes in between there. Like that. Okay. And then the bolt goes back in. Somehow. There it goes. Thumb screw goes back on. Okay, so there's your single suction cup. Okay, so let's say we're doing it on this table. We got one, and then we'd have the other. I'm not sure why this is taken apart in the box. That seems kind of strange. Seems like they would just leave it all together so you wouldn't have to jack with it. Uh, maybe because it has the options of doing one versus two, which is kind of cool. You can only use one, one suction cup versus two. Two seems pretty dang secure. But, like, so we're doing both these on this table, and you want to do about that high. You tighten that bad boy down, and that bad boy down, and then you tighten this bad boy down. That one. Okay, so now you got your double suction cups, which have the you know flipper that you're used to, um, and on top is the weird part. This is this is the release for the camera and the lock. It's kind of a weird deal. I'll show you. Basically, you take one of these. And this goes on the bottom of the camera, and it's got a, it's kind of grooved. And so when that's on the bottom of the camera, you would need a uh, like a quarter or something to put it on there. Okay, when that's on the bottom of the camera, it can be slid in to here. Not with the bolt showing slides in here and it locks in and this red thing locks it in like you push that forward now that bad boy is completely locked in so to release it you have to push 
up, or I'm sorry, down on this, and pull the red thing forward before the cam will come out. Wow, this is kind of difficult when you're not actually not using it on the camera. Okay, cut frame again. I'm gonna get this thing off here. Okay, I'm back. Um, I actually was making that way more complicated than it should have been. Basically, like I said, I hadn't jacked with it before. This tab, you pull it down, it slides right out. And this is simply a lock for that tab. So, anyway, that is way more, way less complicated than I tried to make it be. But anyway, put these on the bottom of the camera, or one of these on the bottom of the camera, and you can make it, you can click it in and out easily. Um, so, that's that part. And you can run this with one or two suction cups, um, just depending on how you want to do it. You know, it's kind of like, I would say kind of like ram mounts, except for these don't look like they're one-inch balls. Uh, it would have been cool if those were used using ram mounts, um, but that is the double suction cup mount. And it's got these white protectors on there to keep the way, way sticky um, uh, deal covered. And once this comes off, it comes with these other two deals, so when it's in storage you can stick these, let it stick to these, and it keeps them from getting uh, jacked up whenever you don't have it on something. So that's kind of cool. Um, those are way stickier than you'd think they would be. They're way stickier than a regular um, suction cup mount. So, there's that part. Next part we have is another one of the mounts, except for it does use that base again. So if you wanted to be able to quickly release the camera from that, you could use the base system. Uh, it's almost like they have two complete separate systems. They have this ball system with the little bases, and then they have like the clip-in system, uh, and then the screw-on one. So that's that's cool to have these options. Uh, it's it's different that they have multiple systems that you can use, but I like the versatility. So that's kind of cool. This is another one of those with the locking. A little red locking tab um, and the base. Now, if you're using just one of the suction cup mounts, this piece right here is what allows you to do that. You put this here, and then it would connect to this piece, and that's basically how you just use one suction cup mount. So if it's like not a car on the racetrack or something, I'd probably use both. Uh, it comes with a little stainless steel tether. That's cool. That's, I don't ever use tethers on my helmets, but if I was doing it on a car or something, I definitely would. Now this is cool. It comes with a handlebar mount. Um, and this is adjustable. I'm going to adjust one of these out. This thing is adjustable up to like, I believe, inch and a half, inch and eight. And I'm sure you could probably get it to adjust even farther by taking this little plastic bit or taking these off. You could fit a bigger bar in there, like a roll cage or something. Um, I've seen pictures of people using these that are actually, um, they are flipping this to where this part is on top and the pegs are on the bottom to try to keep it out of the way of their instruments and stuff like that or because you, you can do it this way or this way on your bars because the the indentions on both sides um, and then this uses that little ball system like I was talking about where it's kind of like a ram mount it'll move until you lock it down with that and then it's got that handy little red tab that locks it in at the little bases. So if you're using the handlebar mount, you got to use these. Um, but 
that is really pretty awesome that it comes with a handlebar mount from uh, in the box, you know, from the from the factory. I don't know of another cam out right now that's coming with both a suction cup mount, handlebar mount, plus um, all the mounting kit stuff that comes with it. Of course, it's going to come with a battery and a USB charging and data cord. Um, this is the package that the battery came in, and then your manuals. First thing you got to do when you get this camera is you got to update the firmware. Man the manual tells you how to do it. It's a little different than updating the firmware on like a 20s here, um, but it's it's not that difficult. It's pretty cool. Uh, you still go through the same program. You just have to do it slightly different. Um, the only thing that I didn't like about it was you couldn't have any other Bluetooth devices plugged into the computer and I use a Bluetooth mouse and so that was kind of a pain. I had to dig out my old mouse. So anyway, that's everything that comes in the box on the brand new Cena Prism. Um, anyway, if you're if you're if you knew about this camera, cool. Um, Hope you liked the video. There's a couple other videos. This actually got released in Europe before it hit the U.S. I've got, this is one of the first few U.S. models to get here. Um, but as far as, you know, people having it, they've had it in, in, in Europe for a couple weeks now. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to be testing this out. Uh, I'm going to test that with uh, regular, just regular audio driving down the road. I'm also going to be testing it out with uh, audio like on the tripod as I'm talking to it and then I'm also going to test it out with the Bluetooth audio which is by far the most unique feature of this camera is having the Bluetooth audio built right in. Um, so I'm going to test it with this 20S here and you can see they both look really cool together. I have one on one side and one on the other. <laughs> but uh, I'll probably end up swapping it over to the AFX helmet. Um, so look for that in the future. Uh, I may even test out the uh, suction cup mount over here. I'm going to have to keep that on my desk at work. Um, but anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think. If there's anything specific you want to see in the review, like uh, you know low light conditions or, or anything weird like that, let me know and I will, uh, I will try to get that into the video where we do a full review on this. Um, as always, my reviews are also posted online on spiritstrike.com. Um, and, uh, you know, that'll probably be coming up in a couple weeks. Hopefully I can get some ride time in. And, uh, anyway, comment below, like the video. Thanks. Subscribe. Talk to y'all later.